and welcome to Smash Riding. I am Justin, as you've known before. <coughs> this is not what he was cleaning up and wanted to sit down. I needed a break. But I'm your other host. There's no host. Your the, the losers in the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> the losers in the chairs. But today's episode. We're talking about Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. Something I was really hyped for because I really love their animated movies and to see a show coming from them. Like, yes, yes, make this happen. <laughs> and they did, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit. You know, uh, when you when we come up with our ideas and you're like, watch this series, I'm like, oh, no, not another series. <laughs> but this one, it was only four episodes long. Yeah, like 28 minutes a piece. Yeah, so... So it, you can get back to doing nothing in no time. <laughs> Four episodes, 28 minutes each. Uh, I mean, I, as soon as it got released, I went right through them. Um, the show's pretty much about the conspiracy covering up what happened, what really happened in the country of Panamistan. I should know that. They said that so many times in the one they episode. They really... They really they wanted you to remember they stressed Panamistan. That. <laughs> now... <clears throat> Obviously, the only Resident Evil experience I have is with, honestly, the the, the movie series. Which is a shame. How dare you? I, well, I, go, you know you'll go to hell for that. I, I'm i going to turn into a zombie then. I, okay, I'm, yeah, you deserve that. <laughs> the thing the zombies eat on the side of the road. So, now, let's let's get into talking about the actual show. Um, well, it kicks off when you see the mad dogs flying in the... We'll try to do the war zone, and one of their plans is to go down. The Mad Dog units get out, and they go... Against orders. Against orders to save them. And then it's, like, broken up throughout the four episodes about what happened to them. And basically, zombies attacked them. And, uh, Commander Wesker... Oh, not Wesker. That's a different one. <laughs> Commander Wilson ordered <clears throat> the place to be burned, bombed, because he's covering up what he was doing. Like, it was a little test run of uh, the bioweapons he was making in Shanghai. Right. Then we jump to present day, 2006, where... Six years after the fact. Yeah. And uh, it's a zombie... Uh, there was a um, hacking attempt on the White House. So the, they bring in Jason, Sheng Mei... And Leon. Leon. I can't yeah. remember who the next one was. Though. Oh, I... Those Patrick, I think his name was. Yeah, he was already in the. Uh, he was like. He was there already. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I got his name. I know his name. Well, I mean, first off, I, I was when you told me to watch the series, I was expecting a more. Yeah, his name was Patrick. I got Patrick. it right. <laughs> now, look at that. First ever. Oh uh, well, I did love the fact that Leon was coming from a terror attack in Pittsburgh. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. I loved it. I wanted. I want to know that story now. <laughs> That's the next movie. Terror attack in Pittsburgh. Come on. A um, bunch of zombies yelling about pierogies and Steelers. That's, that's all that is. <laughs> the users. Um, lawn chairs and parking spots like that's man. That'd be the terror attack. Who moved my lawn chair? <laughs> that meant no parking. Well. Uh, so... Meanwhile, Claire is in Panamistan. She's working with Terra Save the organization to try to build schools and hospitals there. And she runs into a mute kid who had a picture of what he saw during the Civil War, and it was of zombies. So she goes to the White House to meet up, trying to get not only aid, but try to get someone to go on record about this picture and what happened. And she runs into Leon, who had just had a zombie attack in the White House. And which Jason was there, too. Yeah, Jason they Shen have May, off the, the, yeah, the zombie the, uh, attack. Zombie attack. Um, I mean, so then, like, you know, episode three gets into the three of them. Well, I'm pretty sure that was all episode one. Episode two is on the sub. Yeah, uh, yeah, episode two is on the sub where they, I guess, got to know each other and got to know everybody's little bit of backstory. Yeah, they kind of planted seeds there a little bit that Shen and... Jason knew each other before, and then you, when you flash back, you see that <clears throat> she was also there with the Mad Dogs. Yeah, she was the um, dispatcher, I guess yeah. that's what they would call Well, her. Chief Warrant Officer. Okay. 
There you go. Fancy your title, but dispatcher. <laughs> well, the title means something. <laughs> that is true. Um, then <clears throat> I, you know, the the one, uh, and obviously while oh, we're talking about it, the spoilers are going to be. Oh, a spoiler warning yeah. for us all. If you know, definitely you're a big fan. You haven't had time to watch this show yet. You shouldn't huh? be watching this. Stop it. Come back later. Yeah, there will be a warning at the bottom. Come yeah. back later. Come on. Yeah, I mean, we're always well, around. Well, uh, maybe. <laughs> if you choose to come back later. But on the sub, you really get to see, like, Jason and Shen are not on the level. So it's interesting that they start killing all the people on the sub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had some really cool scenes with the <clears throat> mutated rats. Yeah. Kind of, like, erupting out of the bodies and Leon finding creative ways to dispatch of them. Then you get in episode three. When you know, all doing all this, Claire is investigating Panam's thing. And what really happened, and she's starting to circle the truth, and she narrows it down to out of the mad dogs who came out, everyone except for two committed suicide. So she went to go see the other one, and his head was blown off. Bummer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you just while, hate when that stuff happens. No, this going on, you had uh, Wilson, who's now. Secretary, Second Secretary yeah. of State, and he's getting into the president's ear, wanting to hardline China on the You know, basically, you know, he's obviously going up in the rankings. He he used uh, he used what he did to the Mad Dogs and all of that, and Panamistan to increase his power. And it all worked out until the vi the the ending was a good. I thought. Yeah, with um, they tried to persuade Leon to help them, but. Because they weren't upfront with the details, he was not helping them and shot Jason and tracked Shen to her grandfather's house where he learned the truth of what happened. Right. And was giving a chip with all the data on it to take back and expose them. Meanwhile, Claire, who had called the cops because of the dead body and everything, she goes to confront Wilson, who has her kidnapped, to try to silence her. Damn, and it all leads. It all, it all this is brutal. Is. And it all leads to a final combat between Tyrant Jason, Wilson who gets infected, and then Claire and Leon has to get stop him from getting out and interrupting the press conference. Now I know like from the movies there's always been like a you know, antidote and that's that's what was like the main thing. The inhibitor. The, the inhibitor. It's not an antidote, it would just keep you from turning. Forget the movies. You should have forgot them by now. Were they not bad enough to forget? Wait till we do all the reviews on them. <laughs> not in this fucking lifetime, you're not. <laughs> so That's now, what we call solo. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, when there's ideas that we if, don't like together, we gotta do them solo. If you really want to see good Resident Evil movies, watch the animated movies. Not only is the animation generally improved, but they actually utilize the characters that we know and love from the video game, which is what we wanted to see in the movie. <laughs> they fucking get it, but yeah. that's a rant for another day. That is a rant for another day now. But this one, at the very end, took a <clears throat> whoop, cool, an interesting little divot of Leon not giving Claire the chip. And kind of like... Not, he's leaning into the conspiracy, but he's leaning into it because he wants to be the one to do it. But at the same time, Claire's not going to really like take that well. Yeah. And like that could be an interesting plot point for like the second season of like almost Claire working against Leon. Because even, even though they they want the same, same thing, side, yeah, there's they, different result. Yeah, they, they want to get their own ways. Which is for me would be like an interesting second season, because. Claire and Leon have been an iconic duo. They work so damn well together. That's why when you normally see one, you're going to see another. Like, Claire and Leon really work well off together. Uh, going all the way back to the second Resident Evil 2 game back in the 90s. They're such a great dynamic group. And it would almost be interesting to see a second season where they're almost working against each other for the same thing. Meanwhile, it's like work. It's like we're both trying to get to the same point, but we're taking different paths to get there. Um, now, so that was the plot of basically. That was this, a very loose, out of loose run. We don't want to give away plot. too much of it, but. Well, we gave away all the big things. <laughs> we discarded around the little ones. <laughs> You're welcome. 
Now, aren't you glad you clicked on? <laughs> We're so professional here. Yeah. That's what makes us us. We don't want to read from the script. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are cue cards and notes of what we want to say. Who cares? This <laughs> now, the notes there are so me to remember. With the story being, do you think it told the story with the four episodes? I think it told the story, but the story was very basic. They almost didn't like. They took some gambles at times. Like they played it a little risky at the end with like. Leo not giving Claire the chip, like I said already. That was an interesting move. Them not just telling Leon, like, hey, this is what's going on, when they know that Leon has dealt with this level of stuff before. That didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, just just tell Leon what you're doing. He, he will help you. That was kind of weird, but, like, everything was just kind of, like, by the numbers here, and it was, it was fine. It was not a bad thing to like test the water to see how well this would do. But it could have been more. Hmm. Now, uh, the animation that they, you brought up when it's, some of it, some of it, the, the, commu the computer animation, it, was some of it so looked, on point. Yeah, it was on point, it looked really good, like the Mad Dog scenes and like the, um, ambushes, like the uh, military fight scenes about what happened with the Mad Dogs, looked really good. The zombies looked pretty good. But then sometimes things didn't look quite right. Right. Like, when you're looking at, like, the last movie, I believe it was, uh, is it Damnation or a Vendetta? And they looked gorgeous. Some of the scenes looked damn stunning. But this one, it was kind of like a, a mixed bag on the animation. Uh, yeah, uh, I, like I said, I, since I don't really know much about the history of the game, I can... Well, I'm not comparing it to the games. That would be something different. Right, I'm just I'm saying, like, there's the characters. Um, this is all standalone stuff for me. I, uh, the animation... Well, I, I think they kept the characters pretty close to how they are. Like, except that little divot at the end, which I thought was an interesting little choice to make. Um, and it could, like, lead into a good season, too. There was a couple points where uh, I was watching the episodes <clears throat> right off the bat. I'm like, my God, this is like a video game. Then I, I remember walking out of the room for like a split second. And I come back and there was a scene where it was, it looked so real, but it was still commu uh, computer animated. Uh, Leo, the details on like even on the details on all the characters, uh, like even right down to Leon's like shrubs. Yeah. Was uh, I. Oh, yeah, the attention to detail on Leon and Claire was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, the the cast, the more of us, the voice actors, because, um, I mean, obviously, doing an animation review, it, you can't really base anything off their physical acting skills, but how was it, do you think, the, the cast? I, I think the, cat, the voice, the voice actors, actors did really well. I liked the Nick Apostolides. Say and that Steph five times. Apostolides, <laughs> Apostolides, Apostolides, I... If I'm saying it wrong, hey, I'm putting full force energy into being wrong. And Stephanie Pancello, Pancello who did uh, Leon and Claire, they came back because they also voiced them from uh, the Resident Evil 2 remake. Okay. I thought they did really well. I really like them for these characters. Juan Zhao, Joan Zhao, was fine. did a good job with Shen Mei. I can't believe they killed her. Go, oh, that was, uh, that took me off guard. I'm like, oh no, you killed her. And that was a gruesome murder. <laughs> They like were, a little grab holding her arm and just like twisted her neck. Yeah. Like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, Leon climbing up and you just see her blood trickling down his face. Like, oh. There was some good graphic oh, kills. Oh, what a <laughs> kill. <laughs> and you didn't see it coming, too, because. Like, normally, like, those monsters, when they grab the person, like, the time, like, grab the person they remember and they love, like, 80% of the time, they'll let them go. Or they'll hesitate just enough to be saved. So <laughs> to see like him just <laughs> dead and like the Leon was not on time. <laughs> it's like holy shit! I can't believe they did it. <laughs> now, like, and that that kill, you know, it, you know, since the whole series they were, to you know, they're on different like, levels. But Jason doing that caught me off guard. Like in like, episode three, I'm thinking, you know, Shen Meng, she's gonna be really interesting addition to this world and 
like halfway through four, I'm like, never mind, she's gone. <laughs> Brutally. <laughs> Um, now, you were saying, like, the, the character Jason, these added characters. I thought Jason did well. Because you, like, you had that speech with, like, what is the meaning of terror and rooted in the fear. And, like, oh, that is, that's an intense speech. Like, this yeah. is going to be amazing. I, I was fighting uh, between him and Leon when it happens, and he went full tire, and it's like, oh, he's still, like, talking to Leon. He's like, oh, I'm going to spread fear. I'll show them terror. And it's like... Do it. Do it. Do it. Let him out. <laughs> <laughs> now, overall, uh, with, uh, I guess, what will, as of right now, just be the series or season one, what do you think about it? I'm going to give it, like, I thought it was a good step forward. I hope this is not the last of the Infinite Darkness. I hope there's more, more to come. Uh, the story, like I said, was very almost basic. It could have been more, but it, it was fine for what it was. Uh, it was a good use of Leon and Claire. I love seeing Leon and Claire. I will say this, with Infinite Darkness being a hopefully an ongoing thing, and these animated movies were like if we combine it with the three other the three other animated movies, we've not seen Chill, which is weird to me. But they've not utilized Chill because a lot of the times Chill's not only top of the rankings, she's normally, like, at the lowest is probably mine, and I have her, like, four. Normally she is up there, like, one and two. And to not actually see her in the animated series was strange to me. So I'm like, at some point you gotta bring Jill into this animated role. And the more I thought about it and I looked it up, Jill and Claire and Leon have not interacted in this world. In any of the games or any of the animated movies. And that's Those three right. have not interacted. I'm like, that's even stranger. Like, why would you not have Jill interact with Claire or Leon at this point? Because, like, you've had Chris and Leon interacting a few times in the game and in the last animated movie. Um, so... Giving it, giving it your rating. I'm giving it a B. Um, That's fair. From obviously just being like a good, uh, I thought the series episodes kept me hooked on watching it. Generally, when I'm watching uh, and episodes after episodes, I want to see how if the episode ends, if it keeps me wanting more. I thought it did a good job of. Yeah, it really the episode. kept the hook. Because there was not a lot of wasted motion here. Yeah, it was just right to the point and go. Yeah, and like I said, you know, Netflix, they're one of the, the, we'll do the binge watching. Binge watching is fine, but you still gotta keep me engaged in watching it. Binge watching is the only way to go. I haven't watched anything beyond the first episode of Loki at this point, because I'm not watching You're saying for the episode. binge? Because binge watching. Call it a day. <laughs> well, in that matter, that's fine, but like when they were all released at once, um... They really what delicate. keeps me watching one, two, three, four in order without taking a break is if one ends with a hook and I'm like, ooh, I gotta see what happens in part two. I thought the series did that for me. Yeah. Um, Justin talked about the, the, the some of the kills, the uh, the graphic nature. Like the graphic graph. nature. They had some real gory moments. Yeah, it, that was entertaining. Uh, I'm I'm probably going to stick with a B as uh, well. Especially like the second season, like them teasing Tricell. I'm like, ooh, are we going to dip into Euroboros and bring in some of that? Because it's like, hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, feeling, I'm thinking in my head, like, ooh, what could happen? Because in five chills of Lilith, like, that could be cool. That could be something you can play with here. So, uh, obviously, it's out on Netflix right now. It was just released a couple days ago. Um, I think the last time... I you know, this, look, it was in the top ten of the this Netflix streaming stuff. It uh, it, I'm not putting it on the same level, because I do think um, it has like a Castlevania thing going on here, where it's like Castlevania released. It was only four episodes, and it were short episodes, to the point. This almost has that same feel, like four short episodes testing the water to see how it does. And then longer seasons. Then maybe longer seasons, like. But this is all just me. Pitching like 
hypothetical shit in the scene. If the story makes sense for the episodes to, to have more episodes, I'm all for it. I, I didn't have a problem with this series. Uh, you know, like I said, it got to the point, told the story. Um, some of the modes that Justin talked about with uh, Leon and uh, Claire at, at the end there, obviously if you're a more hardcore fan that touches you, you're like, whoa. What's going on? Well, maybe not. I could just be reading into it myself. <laughs> that That's true, too. For me, I, you know, how I took it was, I'm like, okay, they're they're going, it even seemed like they might even be doing different end results, too. And they might just, like, go on a crisscross path every once in a while. That was my opinion. At least that I don't know the, the full history of these characters, but just from based off the show. You're a heathen. What do you do with your time? Everything else. A waste of time. Get a life. Stop, stop playing the games. <laughs> <sighs> they're all being they're all been remade. You have no excuse. So on the PlayStation. Trying to. Until next time. Bye bye.